Hey guys, Good Guy Dan here. Today we're going to take a look at another uh, limited edition kit. This time it's the Crossbone Gundam uh, X2. This kit was purchased on Gente kits at release. I originally bought two of them with the intention of just taking the shot lance off the second one and using it on uh, the Jinx or something else, but wound up not needing it after all. So, let's take a look at the box. Unlike the Banshee Verka I reviewed a couple weeks ago, you'll notice that this box is more of the standard Katogi style with an illustrated cover. Um, shots of you know various parts of the build on the one side. Shots of the completed kit in the other. This is what you would expect to see with the Katoki kit, um, you know, if you're to buy it off the shelves. In fact, the design of this leads me to believe maybe they were thinking about releasing this as a standard kit at one point, but maybe that fell by the wayside. Another nice feature about this particular kit is it has its own manual where, like the Banshee Verka is just the Unicorn, Unicorn Verka's manual. This one is actually specific to the X2, where, you know, it's a photo of the model on the front, illustrations of the kit, points out like the weapons, the shot lance. Um, I think this little action based connector piece is also unique to this version of the kit. I'm not sure though, I haven't built the original crossbone, so I may be completely off base there. And of course you get your typical Katoki marking layout guide and along with this kit like a lot of the limited release kits you receive an actual set of water slides excuse the dog hair on there I imagine this probably isn't too different from what you would get with the uh, the Verka maybe the colors change slightly because this kit is a lot darker and also uh, your normal foil sticker set right there. Now I'm going to start with the plates that I think are actually unique to this kit and the first one is this plate L here and the reason why I say that is because of this little figure right here. I believe that um, this figure is unique to this kit although I'm not entirely sure and you also get a little tiny version of him for the cockpit. The other plate, and this one I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure is unique to this kit, is because um, of the shot lance. So you get all the components for it right here, along with uh, some of these very light blue components up top. And you get a different V-fin. Here is the standard V-fin, and there is the new V-fin. And you can tell the new V-fin is a lot thicker and a little bit longer and a little bit wider okay well maybe not wider but it's close <laughs> so there you go this is uh, like the standard multicolor A plate clear parts, beam effect parts dark blue which will eventually do in banshee blue colors like I do on a lot of my kits just zip through the part trees right now I really like this color, by the way. I think it's a light blue or maybe a light purple. I'm uh, I'm actually colorblind, so you know whatever it is, it is certainly bright. When I like to say colorblind, not black and white colorblind. Just can't tell the difference between stuff. Now here's something interesting. This is the um, this is the beam effect part. I believe this is off the full cloth version of this kit. And the reason I say that is because of these um, kind of serrated looking beam effect parts. I believe this goes on one of the larger weapons from that kit. So I'm not entirely sure about that. I'm sure someone will correct me down in the comments. In fact, I welcome it. So most of these plates you have probably seen before if you have built a crossbone. And unfortunately, I did have one part separate right there. It happens. The Bandai's actually pretty good about sending the plates intact. <laughs> and one thing I did notice looking at this kit is there this kit's gonna require a good bit of masking. Like for example, this little this is like a pommel, or not a pommel, like a handguard for the blaster slash sword. And the outer lip here is supposed to be yellow. 
So it looks like there's going to be some masking on the little hand rifles and some other parts. So, you know, it's nothing too tedious, just if you're averse to masking or maybe you don't paint your kits, you know, beware. You're not going to get exactly what you see in the box. Here's another funny little part. These are arm joints. And these just came well, just like this. I'm not sure if there were problems with the original arm joints, so they had to replace them. But I just thought it was weird that these were thrown in just like this. Or maybe maybe there is a difference between the X and the X2 in the arms. I, I don't really know. Some other little odds and ends you get with this kit. You get um, the cape. I'm still trying to figure out how to make this not look so rigid. Maybe uh, washing it a few times or, you know, letting it soak maybe in vinegar or something just to get it, you know, to loosen up, make it look a little more natural, I suppose. Still beats what you get on the exterior repair, which is just plastic, but, you know. I've seen a lot of people throw these on, not do anything with them, and they just look kind of, uh, I don't know, very rigid. Uh, you get this little bit of wire here. I imagine it's for one of the weapons. And kind of like the Strike Freedom, you get a beam shield. This one's kind of, uh, it's nice. I like the detail. I like how it goes from, you know, kind of that pinkish color to the clear color around the edges. Um, I did notice there was some flash in the center of it, which I already cleaned up a little bit. Probably going to take a little more cleaning. Yeah, so no big deal. It's easy to fix, and it's, it's a nice, uh, nice part on here. Should make for some interesting poses when everything's said and done. All right, guys, so that's a look at the Gundam Crossbone X2 Gundam. Um, I'm really excited to build this kit. This is the first crossbone I've built. Um, it's going to take a little, little bit of extra work with the, um, with the masking and, um, you know, fixing some seam lines on it, but, um, I think it's going to look really sharp when I'm done. So anyways, you can stay tuned and look for that video in the coming future. All right, guys, this is Good Guy Dan signing out. Bye.